Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to take a look at grammar. First thing you need to do is find this sheet in your packet. This is pronouns. This sheet needs to go into your homework folder in the grammar section if you haven't done that yet. This has on some things for this week and some things for next week. So that way you're all set for it. So make sure you get that in there. And then I want you to look at the board. Now, a lot of stuff written out there. This is our grammar lesson 34. It's going to be these pages. But first, I want you to take a look up. Let's review a little bit. You guys remember what a noun is? Tell me the definition, please. A person, place, thing, or idea. That's right. A verb. How about that? A verb can be an action, something you can do or something that something does, or it could be linking or helping. Our linking verbs are am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. Those last three can also be helping verbs. Helping verbs go with an action like I am walking. Am walking is our verb. So those are verbs. Adjectives. How about that? Do you remember? An adjective is a word that describes a noun. It can say what kind, how many, um, what kind of book, a blue book. The word blue is the adjective. How many pieces of candy? 17 pieces. 17 is the adjective. Go on to adverb. An adverb is a word that describes or tells something about what the verb. Kind of gives it away, doesn't it? It's got verb in it, so that's why we know it goes with that. It tells how something was done, when something was done, or where, how it's done. Um, I did my homework um, carefully. How did you do your homework? Carefully. Usually those end in L-Y, don't they? Carefully is the adverb. Uh, I walked upstairs. Where did you walk? Upstairs. I walked upstairs yesterday. When did you walk? Yesterday. Those are adverbs. So today I want to talk about another one of these. The four parts of speech that are left are pronoun, interjection, conjunction, preposition. We've done these four so far. We are going to go to a pronoun. Now, just like adverb had the word verb in it, look at the word pronoun. Does it have something in there that you already know? Yeah, the word noun. This is not a noun. A pronoun has something to do with a noun, though. A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. Think about it this way. What if Mrs. Carlson said, Mrs. Carlson wants the third graders to take out the third graders grammar books so that Mrs. Carlson can teach the third graders how to use pronouns. It's a lot of extra words. Instead, I would say, I want you to take out your grammar book so I can teach you how to use pronouns. I, you. We do that all the time as we speak. We just don't always think about the fact that they're pronouns. So I'm going to show you how to use pronouns correctly as you're writing because you pretty much do already use them correctly when you're speaking. So I want today for us to learn about subject pronouns. There are three kinds of pronouns. We're gonna learn the subject pronouns first. Later we'll learn object pronouns and then possessive pronouns. Possessive, yes, like showing possession, showing ownership. So we're gonna start with subject pronouns. Subject pronouns are used often, you use them often, that is when whatever is the subject or the main part of the sentence gets a pronoun. Let me show you what I mean. So a subject pronoun, if I'm talking about one person about myself, I always use I. I is a pronoun replacing Mrs. Carlson. When you say I, that's a pronoun replacing your name. You don't walk around using your name in, in, saying that in the beginning of sentences. You would say I. What do we notice about the letter I? If it's by itself, it's always capitalized. Mm -hmm. do, don't ever just write a little I. We need to get over that. You guys are third graders. We can do this. Okay, so if 
there's one person talking about themselves, we'd say, I, but what if, what if I had more people here? Just my imaginary friend, Bob. Hi, Bob. Bob said hi. So Bob and I together, if I said Bob and I are making a video, then I could say, we are making a video. Bye, Bob. See you later. We is the plural. We call this first person because I'm talking about myself. If I include myself in it, it's first person. So I and we, these are both pronouns. But what if I'm talking to the people in my class? How about if I'm talking to you? If I'm talking to one person, I would say you. I would like you to watch the video. Talking to one person, but wait a minute. What if I'm talking to everybody? Would I say it any differently? No. I'd say I want you to watch the video. Whether it's one of you or it's 11 of you in this class, I say you. These don't change, but we write it up here twice because not only is you used as a singular, uh, singular subject pronoun, but it's also used as a plural, okay? Now, if I'm talking about someone else, someone not here, I'm not talking to them, I'm not talking about myself, I would have a singular third person, which would include he, she, Lisa. Yes. We're leaving. Um, Russ and Indy have on. There's the bell. Third person subject pronouns are he, she, and it. He went to the store. She got the water bottle off the floor. It ate all of my chocolate. So I was talking about something that's not a human person, it. So those are singular subject pronouns. We would use those at the beginning of the sentence. But what if there's more than one? Not just one person over there. Not just one thing over there. What if there's more than one? Does anybody have any idea what we would say? We would say they. They is the subject pronoun. They should fix the roads. I hear a lot of people say that right now because they're probably pretty bumpy still. They should. So we use these at the beginning of sentences. It comes before the action verb. Those are the subject pronouns. When we recite them, you know how we have our little things to keep us going. We can go in order here. So it would be like this. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. So we have these, they come at the beginning of the sentence. They come before the action verb. So let's take a look at our book. Would you please open to page 156? <coughs> 156. At the top, subject pronouns, learn. Ooh, I see a cool spider there. Do you guys think that's Charlotte? Hmm, maybe. Okay, under the learn part, it says a pronoun is a word that takes the place of one or more nouns. That, that would be for our plural part there. A subject pronoun takes the place of the noun or nouns in the subject. It is used as the subject of the sentence. Mary had a little lamb. Or I could say she had a little lamb. She is a pronoun. Jack and Jill went up the hill. They went up the hill. They is a pronoun. It's replacing, taking the place of Jack and Jill. The spider made a web. It made a web. Now, I don't know if the spider is a girl or a boy. It doesn't matter. If it's an animal, usually we say it. <coughs> Dad and I love nursery rhymes. We, the two of us together. Bob and I love nursery rhymes. Or Dad and I love nursery rhymes. We do. Now look at the next part. It says, these are the subject pronouns. The pronoun you can be singular or plural. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Just like we are here. Pronoun I is always capitalized. Okay, so on practice A, it says write the subject pronoun in each sentence. I'm going to modify the directions on that. I'd like you to just circle it. So on 1 through 10, find the subject pronoun and circle it. Go ahead and pause the video and then come back and you can do, uh, we'll check it. All right, so hopefully you finished number 10, one through 10 on page 156 and 157. Let's look at these together, okay? 
Number one, <clears throat> what did you think is the subject pronoun? Which one did you find? We, yes, we comes at the beginning. What did we do? We read. Okay, number two, what was the subject pronoun you found? They, mm -hmm. right there, has to be on this list. Look at number three, what did you get? I, I like, I is the subject pronoun. Number four, it, yep, it right here, that's the subject pronoun. It may be, that's what it is. Next page, number five, what did you get? You, exactly. Oh, number six is a little tricky because it's not the first word, is it? But it comes before the verb. What did you get for number six? It's got to be on up here. You got he? Yep, that's right. He was a king. Number seven, what is the subject pronoun? I. Mm -hmm. Subject pronoun, it's the beginning. She may have collected these rhymes in France long ago. Number eight, what was that? She, yes. And number nine, they. They were passed on. They is on the list. Ten, what did you get? We. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, I want you to look down at B. Replace the word or words in dark print with a subject pronoun. The first one's done for you. Okay. <clears throat> you're going to take the part in dark, and you're going to replace it with one of these words. One of them. These words are also listed on page 156. So even if you don't have the video up, you can look at it on 156, or you can look on, at it on your pronoun page right here, okay? So let's see number one on section B on page 157. You and I look for some rhymes. You and I. Would you and I be they? No, because it's, it's talking about me being included. So it would be we. Let's try number two. Tom and Pat read some of their favorites. Tom and Pat. Is that singular or plural? Well, that would be plural because it's more than one, right? Tom and Pat. We. I'm not Tom or Pat, and I didn't do the reading of the favorites. Um, you. No, we're not talking to Tom and Pat. So it has to be they. They read some of their favorites. I want you to continue the rest of this and go uh, down through number 10. Put in which one you think is correct, and we will look at it later on. Thanks.